Uh, you can hear me and you can see me both, right? No issues, right? Uh, yes, ma'am. Yeah, mommy, we can do both. No, are you able to see me? Are you able to hear you're me? Not, you're not visible at the moment, but we can see your PowerPoint. Okay, fine. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Suresh, uh, can we start with the recording, sir? Yes, I, I have done. You can, you can <laughs> so, good evening, everyone. On behalf of the core team and the organizers, Department of Psychology, the American College, Madurai, Madras School of Social Work, Chennai, International Center for Clinical Psychology and Psychotherapy, Germany, MS Chellamuthu Institute of Mental Health and Rehabilitation, Madurai, Red Pond and Psy Educational and Psychological Research Center, Madurai, and Psycho-Oncological Association, Turkey. We welcome you all to the 310th session of the Mental Health Webinar Series 2020. Today, we have uh, uh, Ms. Suganya Ganesh Murugan, who is currently working as an assistant professor in the Department of Psychology, Holy Cross Trichy. She's pursuing her PhD at the moment, and she has got six years of teaching experience. She has published papers and articles in different journals, and she has also been guest persons in different workshops and seminars. We are very happy to have her here today, and uh, the session is yours, ma'am. We are very much uh, interested to learn more about learning disability. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am. Good evening, everyone. Before starting the session, I would like to express my sincere gratitude to Dr. Uh, Devamani Christopher, Principal and Secretary, for giving me this opportunity. I also express my sincere thanks to Dr. Suresh Kumar Murugeshan. And finally, thank you for being such a gracious audience to provide me this opportunity to speak before you on the topic learning disability. Thank you once again. So before starting the topic, I would like to give a small introduction about learning disability. Children fail to learn due to varieties of reasons and difficulties. However, these criteria do not exhaust the entire population of poor performers. There are a group of children who fail to learn and define any of the existing criteria of excep exceptionalities. They are called as learning disabled children. The term learning dis uh, disability was coined by Samuel Crook earlier, earlier as a learning disorder and uh, later it was known as academic skill disorder and uh, now it's known as uh, specific learning disability in dsm 5 so specific learning disability uh, this concept was introduced in 2000 it is a strong converging evidence support that was of concept of specific learning disability. This evidence is, is particularly impressive because it converges across different indicators and methodology. Learning disability uh, comes under a neurodevelopmental disorder. Uh, it manifests earlier in the development, often before the child enters the grade school. It is characterized by developmental deficit that produces impairment of personal, social, and academic and occupational functioning. So characteristics of learning disabled child, they essentially suffer from serious learning problem. They may exhibit symptoms of hyperactivity and impulsivity. They suffer from emotional problems and express signs of anxiety. They especially suffer from severely impaired learning inefficiency. All of them essentially exhibit significant educational discrepancy. They may have disorders of memory, thinking, attention, perception, and motor functioning. Individual does not learn despite average intellectual potential and adequate opportunity. Significant discrepancy exists between intellectual potential or academic aptitude and performance. This discrepancy is significant enough to require specialized interventions. It's, it's not due to direct uh, result of uh, mental retardation or medical or neurological illness, environmental factors or sensory, cultural or instructional deprivations. These disorders have their onset in, uh, during the infancy or childhood. When we talk about the causes, that is the etiological factors of learning disability, 
uh, like uh, what happens is many researchers have found that the cerebral function can alter the neurological process that affect the learning and behavior. The cause may be classified under medical, structural brain differences, psychophysiological, biochemical, genetic and or information processing and neuropsychological factors. So under this uh, medical, uh, there are three uh, subcategory that is uh, prenatal, perinatal and uh, postnatal. Under uh, prenatal, if the mother consumes alcohol during the when she is carrying or cigarette smoking, cocaine use, malnutrition, RH factor incompatibility, maternal insufficiency, maternal kidney malfunction, fetal infection, exposure to toxins can lead uh, can uh, lead to LD. The, uh, when the mother is exposed to these kind of things, there is a chance the child may get LD. Uh, next is uh, perinatal factor that is uh, during the uh, the pregnant uh, during the carrying time, the prematurity, anoxia, that lack of oxygen during the time of delivery, prolonged labor, premature separation of placenta, mechanically assisted delivery, and low birth weight. All these can lead to LD. And third medical factor is the postnatal factor, that is accidents, head injury, stroke, high fever, dehydration, brain tumor, meningitis, encephalitis. Uh, Hypoglycemia, hypothyroidism, this is media and epilepsy. Uh, these can cause uh, learning disability. And the second uh, uh, causes of learning disability is uh, identified uh, through the techniques which include autopsy studies like SKT and MRI studies. Autopsy studies like reading disorder, asymmetry of temporal lobe, okay, that occurs during the development of lateralization, which is abnormal in both structure and sequences. So that's the first finding. And the second one is CT and MRI studies showed structural differences, asymmetry of occipital width and the temporal lobe volumes. That is the occipital and the temporal lobe volume re reversal of typical pattern of brain structure asymmetry. The reduction of volume in left hemisphere suggests relative risk of development of language-based skill. So the third uh, causes psychophysiological studies. Uh, this shows that EEG and uh, the, uh, ERP. Okay, this investigates have uh, revealed that abnormal brain electric activity in left temporal and parietal regions in the medial frontal area uh, can lead to learning disability. Uh, no convulsion results has been made through EEG or ERP or PET scan or regional cerebral blood flow studies. Okay. Uh, the fourth one is the biochemical changes, abnormal neurochemical transmission and glandular disorders like the neurotransmitters like serotonin, dopamine and uh, norepinephrine, acetylcholine uh, causes difficulties in neuro, uh, neuronal impulses transmission and in consequences learning, uh, learning and behavioral problems occur. Next coming to the glandular disorder. Thyroid deficiency and hypothyroidism can learn, lead to LD. Abnormalities in young age can cause permanent damage of the brain, affecting overall intelligence, language functioning, and motor disabilities. Okay. Uh, final uh, fifth one is uh, the, the genetic cause. Some SLDs are significantly influenced by genetics, more in reading and language disorder. Twin studies have uh, provided evidences with monozygotic twins showing higher co concordance of reading disorder than dizygotic twins. Linkage analysis studies have st suggested like LD is linked to some variation in chromosome 15 and gene located in one section of chromosome 6. Okay. Uh, the both 47 uh, triple X chromosomes and 47 double XY ca karyotypes uh, correlate with language and motor skills. Uh, current studies support that reading the disorder is familial, heritable, and heterogeneous in uh, its mode of transmission. Okay. Uh, likewise, the memory and the visual processing, auditory and language processing, and all the executive functions uh, plays a major role uh, in uh, leading to LD. So there are four types of learning disabilities. The first one is dyslexia, second one is dysgraphia, third one is dyscalculia, and fourth one is dyspraxia. So 
uh dyslexia is nothing but uh, impairment in reading dyslexia is a problem with accurate or fluent word recognition poor decoding or spelling abilities the child has difficulty in word accuracy reading rate or fluency and or and reading comprehension uh say, see here i have uh, given one example the cat jumped over the moon so you can see that uh, the child reads the like that ted took that on so something uh, wrong they read it and you can see all uh, the omissions displacement insertion substitution reversal guessing confabulation and condensation all those things is been uh, uh, seen when the uh, dyslexic child read the sentence okay uh they always have the signs or uh, like omission of letter syllable word syllable omission word or word ending uh, addition of sounds or words in sentence like uh, for school they pronounce it as school uh, substitution of words or letter like uh, something if they see related to whom they'll tell it as house okay and mispronunciation of words or letter will be seen like say for example if it is zoo they'll tell it as lu uh, reverse whole words or syllable letters like uh, u for n and v for d and uh, transposing of orders in the space like split uh, for split uh, they'll write it like s p l i t if it is s p l i t they'll uh, read it like s p i l t okay there will be uh, transposition of in orders okay these are the signs of uh, dyslexia and second one is dysgraphia dysgraphia is a is impairment in written expression okay this comes under icd f81.1 the child has difficulty while writing uh, the difficulties are spelling accuracy grammar and punctuation clarity or for the or organization of written experiences the child cannot combine auditory or vi visual verbal information into motor action needed for writing other factors influencing uh, written expression that is uh, dysgraphia is attention memory which was for motor audio audio visual language and combined processing deficit so you can see here i have listed some example for begin they'll write it as began for tom it's ton star fruit it's star f i r u t keeping as steeping uh, so all these uh, mistakes they'll do and uh, the coming to the uh, third criteria of uh, learning disability is dyscalculia uh, dyscalculia is uh, nothing but uh, uh, impairment in math characterized by uh, problem processing numerical information learning arithmetic facts and performing accurate or uh, fluent calculation child has difficulty in number sense memorization of arithmetic facts accurate or fl uh, fluent facts accurate math reasoning so they'll have struggles in understanding mathematical concepts like speed time etc there will be difficulty in uh, telling the time left right confusions will be there map reading is difficult for them um, they'll have uh, organizational issues uh, difficulty in navigating back from forth along the number line and consequences lose place values find counting into difficulty in counting in twos threes etc uh, lack confidence in their answer problems uh, informations like 5 plus 4 is equal to 9 and uh, likewise 4 plus 5 is also 9 but they'll have uh, difficulty in uh, recollecting the concepts or uh, understanding the concept they'll have struggle in understanding the chronology issues with the place values problem in handling money uh, and working out changes etc is very difficult for them um, specific uh, dis disorder of arithmetic skills uh, may be associated soft sign and impaired visual spatial or visual perceptual skills this is also known as developmental dyscalculia Okay. 
So there are uh, six types of uh, dyscalculia. The first one is verbal dyscalculia. They'll have naming the difficulties. And second one is uh, proptogonistic dyscalculia. They'll have difficulty in mathematical manipulating objects, pictures, uh, which is real and which is uh, thing. example like comparing objects to determine which is larger and which is smaller, graphical dyscalculia, difficulty in writing mathematical symbols and numerical, and lexical dyscalculia, difficulty in reading mathematical symbols like a plus sign, minus sign, uh, multiplication sign, all those things they will be having difficult. And ideogonistic dyscalculia, difficulty in understanding mathematical concepts and performing calculation mentally. Uh, operational uh, dyscalculia is something uh, dysfunction in difficulty in performing computations. Okay. Uh, so when uh, we talk about uh, this uh, three, uh, like uh, uh, when we diagnose about specific learning disability, uh, uh, with the, the, these symptoms should be present more than six months, okay, at least for six months. Inaccurate, slow, effortful reading must be there. There should be, they should have a difficulty in understanding what is read, difficulty in spelling, difficulty with written expression, difficulty in mastering number facts or calculation, and difficulty with mathematical reasoning. The affected academic skills are sub subsequently and quantifiably below those expected for the individual chronological age and cause significantly interfering with the academic or activities with the daily living or occupational performance as confirmed by the individual assessment. The learning disabled begin during the, as, as told earlier, it begins uh, during the school age years, but may not become fully manifested until the demands of those affected academic skills exist, exceed the individual's limited capacity. LD are not better accounted for by intellectual disability, uncorrected or visual auditory activity or mental or neurological or psychological adversity, lack of proficiency in language and of academic instruction or inadequate education instructions can, are not uh, this criteria. Okay, so when talking about severity, uh, it's been uh, classified into three. That's the mild, moderate and severe. Uh, in case of mild, there should be difficulty in one or two domains. The individual will be able to compensate or function well when provided with appropriate accommodation or support system. Uh, in case of moderate, there is intensive and specialized training for some years guidance required in some criteria. And in the case of severe, intensive individualized and uh, intensive training for most of the school years is required. So uh, while talking about the brain functions and specific learning disability, so if there is damage in the frontal lobe, there is uh, that's the function of frontal lobe is language, and this may lead to expressive dysphasia. And uh, in case of uh, parietal, the dominant lobe, uh, the function is language and calculation. So if there is a damage in the parietal lobe, the child may get aphasia or dyscalculia or dyslexia and dyspraxia. In case of temporal lobe dominant, auditory perception, language, and verbal memories are the function, and receptive aphasia, dyslexia, and impaired verbal memory is the effect of damage of temporal lobe. Okay. Uh, in case of uh, non temporal lobe, non dominant temporal lobe uh, damage, uh, the functions are like auditory perception, melody, pitch, perception, and non verbal memory. Uh, the effect of damage leads to impaired musical skills and impaired non-verbal memory. In if the occipital in case the occipital lobe gets damaged, visual inattention and visual agnosia is the effect of damage. So functional consequences of SLD leads to depression, poor mental health outcome, which includes suicidal. Uh, ideations and intellectual, uh, the differential diagnosis of SLD is intellectual disability, uh, learning disability due to neurological or sensory disorder, neurocognitive disorder, ADHD, psychotic disorder, and specific developmental disorders are the differential diagnosis. So once we've uh, come to know that the child has some difficulty in learning, then we have to go for the assessment. So while talking about the assessment uh, side, um, first initially, uh, 
we should identify problem related to learning and academics to be noted at the school or at the home either the teacher should uh, tell the parents or the parents should uh, no, notice that the child has difficulty in those areas and they should intimate uh, the teacher and this has to be identified at the initial stage okay and uh, for the assessment next going we will have to move to the assessment part in the assessment areas which to be assessed based on the referral like say for an example if the uh, teacher says like um, the child is not reading a, a sentence properly or the child is not uh, able to read fluently then uh, the area which has to be assessed is uh, the reading area that is the impairment with reading has to be addressed and the dyslexic assessment has to be carried forward so the areas which has to be assessed uh, based on the referral has to be kept in mind while going for the assessment and the third one is the intervention phase in this intervention phase we have to consider what support when it should be implemented okay so what support does the child require and uh, what uh, kind of uh, uh, approaches or what kind of uh, intervention is, requ is required for the child it should be implemented correctly and uh, finally multi-sensory approach clinical psychologists psychiatrists and social worker doctors uh, school counselors teachers and parents must play a vital role uh, for assessment, uh, uh, like the teacher or the psychologist or the special uh, educator should require the three skills like observation, learning and screening. Only if these uh, three things go on well, uh, the assessment can be successful. And um, so while doing, doing the assessment, uh, the professional uh, 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 professionals while doing the case history uh, they concentrate in the four main areas the first area is assessment of uh, phenotype uh, examination of child's function or behavior uh, like either it is dyslexia or dyscalculia or dysgraphia should be uh, examined and descri uh, description of uh, phenotypes helps in choosing assessment and time management helps to target assessment and plan intervention and the second core area which has to be concentrated is developmental history standard assessment procedure to examine uh, special characteristics and possible risk factors find the cause of disability or difficulty and differential uh, diagnosis has to be also addressed in this uh, developmental history area and the third core area which has to be assessed is the cognitive fun functions find the cause of disability or difficulty and uh, here also you have to concentrate in the differential diagnosis area and the fourth one is modifying or intervening factor uh, this offers child interaction environment or child's own experience in it this reveals whether the support to be uh, the child is uh, sufficient or uh, extensive support is really required so all these things has to be kept in mind uh, while doing the fourth uh, core assessment that is the modification or intervening factor and finally you go for the type of assessment okay so there are two types of assessment the first one is informal and second one is formal under this informal uh, there are, i'm going to discuss about uh, four uh, five uh, informal tests like shonal's graded spelling test the first one second one is uh, shonal's graded reading test and third one is glad which is known as um grade level assessment of children with learning problems in school and uh, fourth one is uh, dyslexia screening test and fifth one is the dyslexia screening test for the seniors and the fifth one is uh, for juniors okay so these are all the informal assessments which, which i'm going to discuss today and uh, while talking about the formal assessments like uh, nimhans index Bactery, uh, woodcock johnson psychoeducational Bactery test of written language which is known as TOL 4 and uh, key math diagnostic arithmetic test and diagnostic tool for learning disability okay so these are all the formal tests which i'm going to uh, discuss today so first i'll start with dyslexia screening test dstj for juniors okay so while talking about uh, dstj um this uh, like it's uh, identifies children's in junior school who are at risk of dyslexia uh angela fawcett and rod nicholson uh was the author of this test and they published in 2004 and this is applicable for the age group of six years six months to 11 years or five months and uh this test consists of uh, uh 
uh, subtest, 12 subtests like rapid naming, beat reading, uh, one minute reading, postural stability, phonemic segmentation. Uh, under this phonemic segmentation, you have rhyme, two minute spelling, backward digit span, nonsense passage reading, one minute writing, verbal fluency, semantic fluency, and vocabulary. So, under this uh, rapid naming test, uh, you have to ask the child quickly go through the picture and read once for the uh, student. The names of the pictures are hand, bat, boat, bird, tree, bed, mouse, cup, so and so. Uh, you must now ask the student to tell the name of the pictures as you move your fingers from left to right and point the pictures from the first to, to last of the top half. If they make any mistake or hesitate for a few seconds, tell them the right name. Uh, this is for the practice. And when you go for the main test, you should not help them out. Okay, the scoring is done. Note down the time taken for the complete task of a minute. Add five seconds for each mistake and add 10 seconds for the uh, Add 10 seconds if the child use plain sheets. Okay. Uh, so next test is the beat reading. Under this uh, beat reading, uh, you have uh, third time limit is 30 seconds. Uh, uh, place the cord and the 15 beads uh, in a basket and keep it on the table. Demonstrate by threading one bead. Okay. Uh, this has to be done by the administrator who is uh, going to assist the child. And uh, in the main test, start, uh, when the child uh, starts uh, threading the bead as fast, uh, um, you should uh, observe the time. Uh, and uh, if, it is, uh, if the child reaches the maximum time of 30 seconds, you have to uh, stop and you have to count the number of uh, beads, okay, uh, which the child has stringed. And uh, scoring, like uh, subtract from the score if the child drops the string or more than uh, once, okay. Uh, next, coming to the third subtest, that's the one minute reading. Uh, under this one minute reading, the time limit is, and the name itself shows like uh, the time limit is one minute. The child has to read the words in the given time. Okay. So one mark for each word correctly read. Reduce one mark uh, for the errors and pass. Uh, if the child complete the test before a minute, add one point for each second. Okay. So the fourth uh, test is uh, postural stability. So you have to, you must make the child stand like this in this posture. And uh, uh, what you have to instruct is uh, to keep his hands on his side, blindfold, for you have to blindfold him, uh, adjust the tester with the force of 2.5 kg by using the uh, nut, keeping the balance tester at the end of the spinal cord, push the collar towards the, towards the pommel, do it for two times and observe the child's movement. Now repeat. Uh, you now you have to repeat the same procedure by raising the child's hand up above the shoulders. Uh, then uh, scoring is like uh, if the child stands without any movement, you, have, you can give zero. Uh, and if the child moves slightly away, you can give one mark. And if the child raises the Two, you can give two mark and uh, three mark for stepping forward and four mark if the child if the child moves two steps forward uh, add on four scores to give the total score like the this uh, balance tester uh, is uh, used to the measure the postural stability and the fifth uh, one is the phonic segmentation under this uh, what you have to do is uh, uh, you have to ask the child to segment the word. Say, for an example, uh, if you say the word eyelid and uh, uh, eye and lid, you have to segment the words. OK, uh, so like this, it has to be done. And uh, under this, you have the subcategory rhyming. So cat, bat, cap, mat. So you have to give words like that. And the child should identify whether the words is uh, dictated, dictated is rhyming or not rhyming. OK, uh, so total number of uh, correct uh, uh, within a minute is taken uh, as a total score. And the next one is the two minutes spelling.
So under this two minute spelling, uh, what you have to do is uh, check whether the child has a pencil and paper before you start this test. Dictate the words from the practice card, note down the time taken and intimate the child about the time taken and mis uh, mistakes committed. Okay. Uh, so next coming to the backward digit span. This is the seventh test, uh, seventh sub test in the DSTJ. Uh, so this, I think you would have uh, done it uh, in many tests like uh, Whistler's and Batia's battery and so on. So you have to start uh, dictating the numbers starting from two digit and uh, the child has to repeat it in a reverse order. Say for an example, if you dictate the number two nine, the uh, child has to dictate it in a reverse order like nine two. Okay, so starting from two digit, you can go on. Uh, maximum seven digit is there, up to seven digit is there. And uh, next one is uh, nonsense uh, passage reading. Uh, the uh, passage is to be given consists of nonsense uh, passage, uh, will as well as the real word. Uh, so here the child has to read the passages and under this test you have three passages based on the age group it has been divided like six to six point uh, eight uh, 38 words passage is given and uh, the eight to 10 uh, 46 words passage is given 10 to 11 uh, 52 words passage is given based on the child's age you have to select the passage and you have to uh, make the child read and uh, you have to note down the mistakes what all the child has done okay uh, so next coming to the uh, ninth, uh, ninth one is uh, one minute writing. You ask like one minute reading, the time limit is uh, one minute for writing. You are, the child has to copy the passage which is being given and uh, you have to see for the basic scores like the number of words completed and uh, one point for every two seconds if the time taken is less than a minute. Penalty scores also can be given, like uh, detect one point for every two errors. And for handwriting, if it is neat, you can uh, give uh, one mark extra, uh, uh, or, or if it is uh, uh, eligible, you can detect two marks or one mark point for uh, handwriting. And uh, for punctuations also, uh, for the children's aged between six to eight years and above, detect half a point for each item of uh, punctuation omitted a, a maximum of two points okay maximum two points you can deduct for the punctuation for uh, the children who are above six to eight years okay and the 10th subtest is verbal fluency in this test you must ask the child to say as many as words as he can in the minute starting with a particular letter uh, give one mark for every correct word and uh, the 11th subtest semantic fluency you must ask the child to say as many names as he can in a minute starting with a particular thing okay uh, scoring give one mark for each correct word except that it is alive but not plants okay so in case of plants you should not consider okay uh, so next coming to the final subtest uh, that's the vocabulary ask the child to point the object which you call out from the given sheet okay so under this, uh, you have uh, many uh, words like seesaw, pineapple, camel, lizard, volcano, light bulb, etc. So you have to give uh, ma one mark for each picture and maximum is 16 pictures are there. So maximum marks is 16. And final scoring is done like fill the test score column on the table obtained by the child. Next, we can find the set of norms appropriate for the child age and overlay the key, key, score key on the uh, score sheet. Mention at the risk index, okay, calculate the risk code, okay, uh, number of errors done, like all those things, and uh, calculate the risk quotient, okay, and divide it by the uh, 12 subtest, and you'll get one scoring, and the interpretation is done, like, uh, if the risk score is uh, 0.9 or greater, the child has strong evidences of being at risk and if the child score is 0 0.6 to 0.8 there is a mild evidences of being at risk okay uh, so likewise uh, the same procedures is carried out for uh, seniors also 
um, under this uh, seniors uh, DST J S, you have uh, in uh, fifth uh, eleven subtest under this eleven subtest in uh, fourth subtest you have uh, uh, one uh, new test like spoonerism. Okay, I'll, uh, other than that everything is same like uh, juniors. Under this uh, spoonerism, the child is instructed to swap over the sounds of being or beginning of uh, two words. If the words were hello, Jack, the child should say jello, Jack. Okay, so he has to swap the uh, word uh, sound of the first uh, word and he has to say that is uh, H for uh, uh, for Jack. He should uh, put the letter H from the first word and for the hello. Uh, H, he should uh, replace the first letter with J. Okay, so Jello Jack. Okay, this is, has to be done. Uh, so for a uh, likewise fat pig, uh, car park, teddy bear. So like that is has to go. And uh, scores uh, like one mark can be given. And uh, one mark can be given. Total number of corrects in the main test give one mark for each correct. That is uh, two mark for possible per item. Okay. Uh, so this has to this is the dyslexia screening test for uh, seniors and uh, next coming to the uh, scoring procedure is also same like uh, dstj okay so the same procedure has to be ca carried forward and the same interpretation method is being used and uh, next coming to the third test shonal graded word reading test here the child is required to read out aloud a, a series of graded words to be obtained in a reading age. It is applicable. Uh, it is applicable uh, for the children's six to twelve point six years. Continue until the child has missed ten words. Okay. Uh, sum of number of words correctly read. Use the norms provided in the manual to derive the reading age. Okay, there will be a manual. In that manual, you can see uh, number of words correctly read will indicate an age criteria. Okay, so based on that, you can interrupt the child's reading age. Okay. Uh, next is. Uh, glad okay so under this uh, this is an indian adaptation uh, method it has been uh, mostly used by teachers uh, grade level assessment for children with learning uh, disability uh, it is used to find out the level of academic performance in child up to classes one to four the author of this test is jayanti narayana uh, for class one, the score has to be 0 0.8 and similarly for class two and for class three, it's 0 0.99 and class four, it's 0 0.68. Uh, GLAD consists of two format. In the first format, it contains a worksheet of English, Hindi and math. Items include tasks uh, re, uh, requiring verbal and written expression responses to the question. Instructions are given at the top and uh, for the total score in the blank space has been provided in the sheet and you have to do it and the scores is given class level when converted to percentage is grouped as follows overall 70 percent shows that the child is in the independent level if the child scores 40 to 69 percent it is on the instruction level and if, it, if the child scores below 40 the child is in the frustration level okay so this is for format one and uh, for the format too, it's generally used by the teachers. Okay, so I'm not going much with this, uh, and uh, I'm just moving to the next test: Woodcock Johnson Psychoeducational Battery, uh, which is uh, called as WJ3. Uh, it's a most recent edition of uh, the Woodcock Johnson Psychoeducational Battery, originally published in 1997. Uh, it consists of uh, tests like verbal comprehension, visual auditory learning, spatial relationships, sound blending, concept formation, number reversed, incomplete words, auditory working memory, general information, and visual matching. Uh, so uh, all these uh, tests, uh, like uh, this, uh, I'm going with the basic uh, thing, like uh, you'll be not able to understand if i say without the tools or anything where you'll be able to 
understand when you see or when you observe the test which is being administered uh, by the psychologist to the child in a clear way just for the basic information i have given you the test name and the subtests in it and uh, next i'm going to the towel uh, t o w l 4 test for written language the fourth edition of test for written language is a comprehensive diagnostic test of written expression it is used to identify students who write poorly and therefore need special help determine students particular strength and weakness in various writing abilities writing abilities uh, uh, document students progress in special writing programs measure writing in research so under this, uh, you can go through the sub criteria like vocabulary, spelling, punctuation, logical sentence, logical sentence, sentence combining, contextual convention, story composition. Uh, so all these things you can go through. Under this vocabulary, the student writes. Uh, the student ri uh, writes. Uh, writes a sentence uh, that uh, incorporates uh, stimulus words. For example, uh, for ran, a student writes, I ran up the hill. The spelling, the student writes sentences from dictation, making proper use of spelling rules. Under punctuation, students write a uh, sentence for dictation, making a uh, punctuation, pronunciation, use of uh, capitalization rules, etc. Logical sentence, a student edits an illogical sentence so that it makes a better sense. Example, John blinked his nose. Um, is, John blinked his nose is changed to as John blinked his eye. Okay. Uh, so, under sentence combining, the students integrate the meaning of several short sentences into one gram grammatically correct sentence. Example, John drives fast is combined with John has a red car, making John dri drives his red car fast. Okay. Next one is uh, contextual convention. Under this contextual convention, the student writes a story in response to a stimulus picture, points a uh, Points are earned for uh, satisfying specific arbitrary, uh, arbi arbitrary requirement relative to orthographic example, punctuations and spellings, uh, and grammatic conventions, example, sentence construction, noun, verb, or agreement, etc. Next, uh, the final thing is uh, the story composition. The student's story is evaluated relative to the quality of its composition example vocabulary plot prose uh, development of uh, characters and interest to the reader okay so these are the things uh, which uh, which is being assessed in a written language so Next, coming to the key map diagnostic arithmetic test, it measures the several areas of mathematics, including knowledge of mathematical symbols, content, function, and computation. The age criteria for application of this test is four years, six months to 21 years, 11 months. It is used to assess ability in mathematics of children in grade one to six. The parallel test forms are form A and form B. Each have 372 items divided into 10 subtests. The te test co content covers the full spectrum of math concepts and skills ranging from um, early experiences with rot and rational counting through experiences with fa factorial, polynomial and solving linear equations. Okay. So the next uh, formal uh, assessment is Niemann's. Uh, Niemann's index uh, battery of uh, specific learning disability developed by John A. in 1989 for the uh, purpose of his doctoral thesis. It consists of uh, uh, Bender Gestalt test, Minnesota uh, Percepto diagnostic test, test of reading, writing, comprehension, spelling, and test of mathematics. It is it was generally administered to sample of 58. Uh, to 12 years old children who presented with scholastic backwardness and uh, control over 50 ch children with average of above average scholastic achievements. In uh, 1992, uh, compiled the this test was compiled uh, as a battery and named it as uh, Nimhans Index of SLD. Uh, this test consists of um, 
फाइव सब टेस्ट अटेंशन टेस्ट लांग्वेज टेस्ट अर्थमेटिक टेस्ट विश्व मोटार स्किल अंड मेमरी टेस्ट अंड अटेंशन टेस्ट नंबर कैंसलेशन इज बी डन इन लांग्वेज टेस्ट रीडिंग रईटिंग स्पेलिंग अंड कंप्रिहेंशन इज बी असस्ट अंड अरेथमेटिक अडिशन अप्राशन मल्टिप्लिकेशन डिविशन अंड फ्राक्शन कैलकुलेशन आर कैरिड अवट अंड विश्व मोटा स्किल बेंडर जिस्टल टेस्ट अंड डेवलपमेंटल टेस्ट आफ विश्व मोटा इंटग्रेशन इज बी डन and uh, under this memory auditory and visual memory is been assessed okay i'm not going to explain it in detail because this nimhans index battery itself uh, requires two hours of explanation and two hours of uh, class so i'm not uh, touching much with that part uh, you can just know the basic information of nimhans and i think that will do so while you apply this uh, nimhans battery uh, you will be uh, able to assess the child's uh, omission overlapping difficulty uh, perseveration fragmentation all these can be assessed uh, um, line extension retrogression all these can be assessed uh, and rotation scribbling simplification superimposition of design all these can be assessed under this uh, nimhans battery of sld and uh, finally uh, the next thing is uh, diagnostic tool of learning disability it was constructed by uh, swarup et al uh, to identify children who experience learning problem because of learning disability learning disability could span over variety of abilities 10 areas of each representing a basic psychological process have been selected a deficit in any of this areas or area of, or combination of any would lead to learning problem so under this concept they have uh, 10 areas of assessment uh, in this uh, so six areas of assessment uh, Uh, in this uh, the first six areas represent the process involved in visual and auditory perception the areas are eye hand coordination figure ground perception figure consistency position in space spatial relation and auditory perception this six, first six areas represents the visual and auditory perception of the uh, child okay so under eye hand uh, coordination uh, under the eye hand coordination it is the ability uh, the co coordinate vision the movement of hands for effective use uh, it assess the graphic motor sequencing and quality of movement subject with dysgraphia will grow grow in this test uh, the second one is figure ground perception it is also called as selective attention it is the ability to attend only to the stimuli which requires one one's attention at a given period and ignores the stimuli present in order to encode the perceptual experiences meaningfully it measures ability to select control and di direct attention process leading to clear perception the third uh, su subtest is figure consistency it measures the ability to identify shapes symbols and figure despite its apparent change in size direction and position it involves the recognition of shape size pictures graphics letters and figures the aim of this subtest is to test whether uh, whether or not the subject has conserved the important perceptual details of shape symbols pictures graphic letters and figures the for the next is uh, position in space test it is the ability to perceive the relationship between observer and the object in the space that is of it being below above behind in front of or next etc to the person observing this grows out the individuals inherent ability to organize and things in space okay the next test is spatial relation it is the ability to see a relationship between two or more object in relation to self and in relation to others it it is an outreach of position in space space it comes in uh, basis of uh, processing information at the abstract level later it involves simultaneous processing in various direction and uh, thought flexibility the next one is auditory perception uh, 
its uh, ability to provide meaning to auditory stimuli. This test consists of five subtests, represents auditory reception of uh, nonverbal information. The second one is uh, assessing encoding ability uh, pre requisite for uh, any language learning. It represents auditory discrimination. It assesses the child's phonemic lang analysis and segmentation. It measures the subject phonemic association and indirectly his verbal fluency. Uh, finally, it measures subject's morpheme, grapheme, association, and his verbal fluency. Uh, the, ne the next area is the cognitive function area. Uh, this area consists of subtests from 7 to 10. That is, the four subtests are here. Uh, the seventh subtest is cognitive ability, eighth one is memory, ninth one is receptive language, and tenth one is expressive language. In memory, it represents the subject's ability to manipulate, stimulate, stimuli in reversed order. That is, uh, reverse the letter, number, etc. is the ability. Uh, under the uh, under this receptive language, uh, uh, the child has uh, measured the receptive expressive uh, receptive area of uh, its uh, uh, deficiency and uh, in expressive uh, the child has measured the expressive languages um, the finally coming to the intervention part uh, under this intervention part uh, so it is important for the therapist to know the child's visual auditory pattern before starting the intervention Visual auditory patterns are you must able to assess and finalize whether the child is in the object to object level or object to picture level or picture to picture level or picture to silhouette level or silhouette to outline, outline to shape or shape to letter. So once you are able to rule out this and once you are able to find out the level, then you can find the learning process in which the child is like whether the child is in the acquisition area or fluency area is lagging, maintenance area is lagging, or generalization area is lagging. So once this has been done, you can go for interventions like brain gym or uh, what method, multi, that is the sense, multi-sensory method. Um, all these can be done and uh, you can uh, help the child. Under this brain gym, what has to be done is uh, uh, this brain gym helps the two hemispheres are physically separated and joined by corpus callosum, is the, which is more fully developed in women rather than men. Uh, the right brain is uh, good unconscious awareness, intuition, comprehension of body language and social cues, creativity, insight and visual spatial processing are being assessed and uh, are being uh, enhanced in brain gem. Uh, in left brain, linguistic awareness, talking, reading, writing, spelling, processing math, typing, grammar, logical, analytical, reasoning integrated brain better uh, hydrated uh, in integrated brain uh, everything works better and faster is the uh, main thing of this uh, and uh, the seven easy minutes of brain gym are first you have to sip uh, water and next is belly, be belly breathing uh, four to eight breaths and brain buttons four to eight breaths hookups four to eight breaths brain integration movement four to eight breaths positive points four to eight breaths uh, cross crawl 10 to 25 repetitions uh, are done. This uh, brain button, belly breathing, hookups, brain integration moments are, are the name of the exercises. Positive points and cross crawls are the name of the exercises. Uh, and so if you just Google it, uh, you can. Uh, be able to see the images and the instructions of these brain gym exercises. So this under this belly breathing, what you have to do is place your hands on your abdomen, exhale through your mouth in short puffs as if 
keeping a feather in your in the air until your lungs are empty inhale as though you are using a drinking straw filling your body like a balloon uh, if you are uh, if you arc your body you can inhale more deeply slowly and fully exhale puffing repeat this inhalation and exhalation in a natural rhythm or uh, for at least 10 to uh, four uh, full breaths okay um, belly improves the supply of oxygen to your whole body especially the brain via the blood it relaxes the central nervous system and increase your energy level diaphragmatic breathing improves the reading speaking ability and puffing exercises uh, uh, puffing exercises uh, increase the um, increase the diaphragmatic uh, breathing and uh, this will help you in uh, enhancing the reading and speaking ability of the child okay uh, the second uh, exercise is the brain button uh, put your hand on the uh, on the white space as possible between the thumbs and the index finger place your index and the thumb finger on the slight uh, indentation below the collar bone of your on the each side of the sternum press slightly in a pulsing manner at the same time put the other hand over the navel area of your stomach gently press the uh, these two points for about 2 minutes brain button stimulates the carotid arteries that supply oxygenated blood to your brain they help re establish directional mas uh, massage from parts of the uh, body to the brain and the visual system this will improve the brain's cross talk of reading writing speaking and or following directions okay uh, the next exercise is hook ups uh, you have to sit in a chair resting your left and the right ankle in the top of your uh, uh, other knee grasp your ankle with your opposite hand and the ball of your uh, foot with the same hand as you inhale place your tongue flat against the roof of your mouth about one quarter of the inch behind your front teeth your tongue as you inhale close your eyes and rest in this posture enjoy relaxation for four to eight complete breaths okay uh, in part two uncross your legs placing your feet flat on your floor lightly join the fingertips of your uh, both the hands together as though closing a ball keep your eye closed as you continue to lift your tongue on the inhalation and lower it on the exhalation relaxing in this position for four to eight breaths okay will enhance uh, your uh, uh, speaking learning reading skills etc okay uh, so next is the brain integration integration movement extend your arms out as wide apart as in comfortable uh, picture bringing your left and right brain hemisphere together as you bring your uh, two hands together enjoy this connection for four to eight breaths using your right and the left brain together stimulates creativity as well as logical thinking and uh, the next one is the positive points positive points are located about the center of each eyebrows and halfway to the hairlines you might find a slight bulge at each points lightly place your three fingers of each points of these point close your eyes and hold this point lightly during the course of four to ten slow complete breaths you can hold your own points or have a friend hold them for you to further re uh, release stress, hold the points while re uh, reviewing stress, procedures, situations and considering alternative possibilities. Positive points are acupressure points, especially known as diffusing the fight or flight reflexes, thus reducing emotional stressors. This is very important because I told already the in the characteristics of learning disability ch child, there will be emotional problem for the child. So in order to reduce this, this positive points are being used. Touching this points transfer the brain response for the midbrain to the frontal lobe, allowing a more rational response. Okay. Um, Next one is the cross crawl. Uh, standing, march in a place, alternatively touching 
uh, each hands onto the opposite knee, continuing during uh, the course of uh, four to eight complete breath. A variation can be done sitting down by raising the knee of the chair and touching your elbow hand to your uh, knee. Cross crawl activity, both brain hemisphere simultaneously. Uh, it en engages the brain for coordinating visual, auditory, and aesthetic ability, thus improving such uh, skill as listening, reading, writing, and memory. This is very good exercises to uh, exercise to use when you are confused, bored, can't focus, or feel ungrounded. Okay. Uh, so this is about brain gym. Uh, I have listed very few exercises. Apart from that, few more exercises are there. Uh, Next is the multi-sensory approach. Uh, this is known as Watt method. Uh, this was introduced by Grant Freeland in 1921. Um, in this, we use the uh, Wilhelm approach. It was developed in 1930 on the basis of research performed by Samuel Orton, a neurologist. Watt method uses visual, auditory, kinesthetic, and tactile. Established rapport with the child through positive reconditioning. Allow him to select a word, may it be any word, feeling the word with a fingertip through tracing it and spelling, uh, spelling it aloud. Let him write it with a pen or a pencil and more words in a similar manner. When more number of words are learned, let him write story, type the story and let him read it, the story. By this, he sees... Uh, says, hears, and feels the learn. Therefore, it's called as a what method. And uh, Guilham method, known as a phonemic method, phonetic drill cards are used in this. Cards is exposed. Uh, say, for an example, T says the name of the letter. Uh, child repeats. T says sounds of the letter. The child repeats. Uh, uh, technique, uh, you should also concentrate in executive skills. Uh, the three main dimensions of uh, executive skills are working memory, inhibitory control, and uh, cognitive flexibility. Working memory, the ability to hold information in mind and use it. Inhibitory control, uh, the ability to master thoughts and impulses so as to resist temptation, distraction, and habits, and to pause and think before acting. Okay. Uh, the third component is cognitive flexibility, the capacity to switch gears and adjust to changing demands, priorities, or perspectives. Teaching uh, pre-reading skills for the children, it means simply readiness to read, follow task, following task can be sequence for sequence of pre-reading skills like matching picture, grouping, naming. Uh, can done uh, for dysgraphic pre-writing skills like freehand scribbling, coloring with the line, joining dot lines, independent writing, identifying shapes, identifying lines and different differences, uh, improving eye-hand coordinations like cutting and pasting activity can help the child, coloring within the line can help the child. These things can be done to uh, help the dysgraphic child and management of mathematics skills. Uh, the learning take place in the four level uh, in, if we talk about uh, enhancing the mathematical skills. Uh, in the concrete level, what you have to do is instruction start with the concrete where the child uses three-dimensional object to learn the concepts to solve a computational problem. In semi-concrete level, in this uh, pictures and drawings are used to learn uh, concepts and computational problems. Uh, abstract level, the student read the problem, compute mentally and write the answers. In the application level, the child uh, sees that they relate to day-to-day -day life, okay? So here's an example. Uh, in concrete level, two uh, they see two apples. Give apples and ask them to count. In, pic uh, in the pictorial level, uh, draw apples and count them, okay? Then in the abstract level, write the numbers and ask them to solve the statement, okay? Uh, so dealing with learning disabled child, give positive feedback to the student, give lot of opportunity for practice, review the student's evaluation record for identifying learning disability area, uh, consult with specialist, provide proper instruction, address the student's special need, establish positive working relationship with the student and parents. Thank you. I think I have covered much. Thank you for the opportunity. 
Ma'am, sir. Okay, thank you then. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the wonderful session, ma'am. So uh, we will have a uh, question as a session now. Pardon yes. Me? If you have any questions, you can type it in the chat box so that I can read it for ma'am or you can unmute yourself and ask the questions. There are very good feedbacks in the chat box ma'am. Okay, thank you. Am I audible? Yes, ma'am, you are audible. Uh, thank you. Thank you for the feedback. Yes, thank you ma'am. As participants, you can type the questions in the chat box or you can unmute yourself and ask if you're not able to unmute kindly raise your hand so that i can uh, give you the permission to unmute yourself okay. Good evening, ma'am. Uh, Satya here. Yes, ma'am. It was a wonderful uh, presentation, and uh, you taught us a lot of lot of things in a short span of time. And I work in with uh, learning difficulty kids, slow learners. I teach tenth and twelfth, so I could easily connect most of the things. And uh, again, like latest uh, Nimans has. Uh, um the iq level is there any yeah. changes is there any changes recently the no ma iq level moderate mild and this thing is there any changes and what's the difference between slow learner and learning difficulty kids okay slow learner is uh, someone who uh, learns uh, like they'll be able to understand what we teach but when we give more drilling no uh, when we drill the child he can he'll be able to grasp the concept and he'll be able to understand and he'll be able to do the task uh, learning disabled okay. child uh, has yeah, that's understood yeah uh -huh. okay this is the difference because uh, the learning difficulty neurological thing yeah 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 okay okay so is there any iq for slow learners no, no, no. There's no relationship between IQ and learning disability. That has to be very clear. Oh, okay. okay. Uh, MR child, if it is an MR, then uh, you know the features of MR, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. So the child has uh, profound, uh, uh, severe, profound, severe, mild, moderate. No? Based on that, they, they whether it is a trainable child or a uh, super uh -huh. educable child, based on yeah. that, uh, we have to work on it. And okay. uh, be, uh, below, if the child is in the average level and there is no any link between uh, uh, Emma, sorry, IQ and learning disability. If the child is in the average level, there is no link between IQ. If the child is a, actually an MR child, then they have to work on it. Okay. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you so much. It was a wonderful session. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Satya, ma'am, for the question. And it was a very good question explanation on thank you so much as participants if you have any more questions you can unmute yourself and ask or put it in the chat box and some of them have asked for uh, the ppt ma'am if it is possible we can uh, share the ppt okay uh, ma'am i'll just mail you can you just tell me uh, yeah, sure, ma'am. You can also put it. Okay, I I, I will I will text you, ma'am. Is that okay? 
Uh, yeah, you can get sticks to me, ma'am, no issues. Yeah, sure, ma'am. Thank you. You can text me the mail ID, ma'am, so that I'll share you yeah. the PPT and you can use Yeah, sure, sure, sure. sure ma I think, <laughs> no, I don't know whether I have made it clear or I have confused them because no doubts are arising. <laughs> No, I mean, it was a very beautiful explanation. No, ma'am, it's not that it, there's no yeah. doubt because you made it clear. Uh -huh. <laughs> Actually, that's the thing. And um, maybe for this assessment part, it was a little difficult. Otherwise, like, it is not easy yeah. for everyone to understand in a one go. So yeah. Otherwise, before that, it was uh, excellent and very uh, crisp and uh, too good. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm really glad that uh, if you have any questions also, you can actually uh, mail to us so that I can uh, forward the question to ma'am and can get in contact. Uh, I will put the mail ID in the chat box, mywebinarfeedback at gmail.com. So uh, now I request Dr. Salim sir to uh, give the vote of thanks. Salim sir? Thank yeah, yes, yes. ma'am, I am here. Thank you, okay, ma'am, for giving the opportunity to give the vote of thanks. So it was, I am audible, ma'am? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, yeah. sir. It was a very good session. We had a 310 session learning disability. And uh, today's research person, Suganya Ganesh, ma'am, uh, really uh, explained very well as uh, feedback from Satya, ma'am, as a, a participant. Um, uh, rightly, she said it was the, in one hour, um, like a 10 hour topics, uh, Suganya ma'am covered, I think, all the aspects of learning disability. I think we learned a lot today uh, from the beginning of concept to characters, etiology, like root causes of uh, medical, prenatal, postnatal, from that to diagnosis, assessment, and the learning process interventions, and uh, like a gym, seven minute gym, a lot, lot, lot of information uh, he covered, ma'am. So we learned a lot about in all the aspects of uh, learning particularly uh, very clearly he said um, uh, it's um, um, like um, learning of uh, learning and uh, cognition uh, uh, disorder so mainly that is a thing and uh, uh, from the characters we can understand uh, the physiological studies and the general studies and genetic causes and we can find a lot of uh, root causes are there as per your etiology. So, and of course, we um, learn a lot of uh, types like dyslexia, dyscraphia, and dys, uh, dyspraxia, all those things. And the science he explained very well of like moderate and uh, all those signs and uh, types also and severities and particularly brain function of uh, right and left brains. And uh, of course, Satya Mam said, uh, and you can have the one more session uh, especially for the assessment ma'am because a lot of assessment today uh, we learn like dyslexia screening test and adult screening test and Woodcock johnson psychoeducational battery revised test and of course demands uh, particularly index for specific learning disorder uh, disabilities so this is the vast area i believe so probably in future course of time we can cover one more uh, session exclusively for the assessment so then we can go for the more intervention and uh, uh, we can uh, uh, because it's a very practical session assessment so we need it actually like it came and diagnostic arithmetic test and the three areas of assessment uh, particularly 10 area of assessment uh, it's a very awesome so we can have the one more session uh, if it is required and if you willing to uh, participate now sure, so sure. really yeah we learned a lot today. Within a short span, we learned a lot of information at the single learning disability, LD, special learning uh, SLD. So thanks. Uh, we kindly accept our gratitude on behalf of American College Madurai and the MSH Chalamuthi Institute of Madurai and the Metro School of Social Work Chennai and the International um, Center for uh, Clinical Psychology and Psychotherapy and the Psycho Oncological Association, Turkey and the Red Pond Educational Association uh, Madurai. So, but thank you, ma'am. Thank you, all the participants. Thank, thank you, sir. Thank, so thank you for the opportunity. Participant, we will have yet another wonderful session uh, tomorrow, the same time. Yes, thank you, ma'am. Uh, we can end the session now. Thank you so okay. much, ma'am. Thank, thank you for you. joining us today. Thank you so much. Thank you.